I'm Gary Gordon, Bishop of the Diocese of Whitehorse, ordained Bishop of this diocese in March 22nd, 2006. I really sort of heard God saying, I think this is what you want to do. I think this is what I want you to do. And so I just started to say yes. It's almost like I heard all the stars say yes. And I've been saying yes ever since and everything seems to work out. It's, it's kind of amazing. Yes is a wonderful word. When I live in, in this absolute majestic grandeur of God's creation, I just, every day I get up, I just say, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm in heaven. I mean, there's problems and challenges, but uh, when you look out, if you got your eyes open, you, all you can see is miracles all around. I mean, it's really incredible. Now, you know the pointy hat is called a miter, and it's a sign like a flame. Does it look like a flame to you? You know, like a like the top of a candle. I now know people by name in every single community in the diocese. I know all the different First Nations communities. I know names of people, individuals, families. I've made a point of trying to get around for baptisms and confirmations and funerals. Get to know the people. I have a baptism in Lower Post on the 20th of September, and I'll probably come down after that. I'm still seeing a desire on behalf of the communities for the ministry of the church and the sacraments. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And I'm judging that I need help. Even though I've got a good truck and I can get around on the road, I can't cover every place. I'm starting to tell people the story of the mission, thinking that if I give them the same kind of zeal and love of the mission and of Christ and of, and of the church, they're going to catch it. It's kind of catchy. And they're going to say, I want to come up and do that. Now, maybe they're not going to come forever. Maybe I can get people to come up for two or three years. And they're going to help out. <laughs> come on, Kelly. <laughs> oh, boy, what a great day. What a wonderful day. Here we are. Joined minus 35, and Jesus is here. Praise Jesus. I'm looking for people who have been touched by the Holy Spirit. They may not even know it yet. Men and women who've got a little, a little adventure in them, you know, aren't entirely satisfied with sitting in an apartment, watching the tube, playing video games, like they want to unplug from their cell phone and just get out there and relate to people. I think there still are young people out there who truly want to give their lives to Christ and to the church. and be in the mission. You know, whether it's 100 degrees above or 100 degrees below, they, they just want to, to get out and be in the communities, in the lives of people. My name is Marilyn Vesner. My husband Hart and I are the pastoral administrators of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish here in Teslin. I think Hart and I want to be channels of God's love and we want to role model caring for one another. And I think this is also sort of the mindset of the Tlingit community and about 85 or 90 percent of the people in church on Sunday are, are Tlingit First Nation. There are some things that I really appreciate about First Nations and this is their sense of reverence before the Creator. 
you don't have to argue with them that God exists. You know, they know. They know that he gives the game for them to hunt and the fish and the lakes and the river and the beavers and um, that he gives the rain and the sun. There's some lovely, lovely, lovely people. And not only lovely, but also loving. Some of the people have embraced us warmly and uh, sincerely. I actually have really come to appreciate um, Hart and Marilyn, the lay people that came to Teslin, because when Hart came in, I really started to ponder what he, what was given to us. Like he would he would give us a, a piece of scripture and leave it with us to ponder. Like give us a few options around what interpretation of it would me would mean. I served for. Uh a number of years, like my father did as an altar boy, helping out uh, the priests and the services on Sunday. And so from that perspective, uh, it's kind of how my uh, uh, work with the church here in Teslam uh, has come to be what it is today. We have several people in the church who say, if it weren't for the grace of God, I would still be in the gutter. I would still be drinking. But I quit 20 years ago and I praise God for it every day. There are problems with alcohol and it has destroyed too many lives. Um, there has been the problem of the residential schools um, because parent, uh, children were taken away so young and stayed in that regimented atmosphere that they, they did not see their parents role modeling parenting. And so they've had trouble being parents themselves. One of our concerns is that we don't seem to be reaching the young people. They don't come within reach. These young women who at 16 are having babies um, and maybe their partner's in the picture now, but he won't always be there. I don't know what that says for their own self-esteem, but I want to come alongside and say to these young women, you know, you are precious, you are worthy, you, God loves you so much. At the same time, I'd like to get those young men and say to them, you know, you are worth so much. Drugs have nothing to offer you. Alcohol has nothing to offer you. But God has a future for you and a plan. Juanita Kramer. I was born in Whitehorse, raised here in little old Teslin. I'm a Slingit Indian, yes. Slingit, originally from the coast of Alaska. My ancestors moved inland uh, a few generations ago. Teslin has always been a fairly exemplary community as far as leadership and um, role modeling and different things like that. Like our community is, um, we dance, we sing, we have fun, we enjoy each other's company, and um, I think that our faith brings, brings that sort of forward for everything. It's a tough place because if you look around and you listen to the news, you read the newspapers, you hear people are just a, uh, that are taken back by the violence that, that's out there for us, you know, and you, you just look at that. But we can find sanctuary with one another. And it's by what they've done for us that helps us to find that. Find that within ourselves that we can share it with one another. God is... is it's very gracious, and, and I guess the reason I've been cheerful is that I have so much to learn. And you don't come ready-made for this job. <laughs> it's been a, a, a steep learning curve. And, um, and I realize that I was much too proud and probably much too arrogant and probably felt I had so much to offer. 
And actually, I have received so much. You know, how can the Bible, if people question faith, how can it be so wrong when it tells you to live in love? Love is a wonderful thing. And if there had been, if there was more love in this world, we would, um, you know, a lot of the other stuff wouldn't matter. We need to start, I want to say, pra practicing what we preach. We need to start living in love. And I need, I need to give credit where credit is due. That God has brought us to a wonderful place and has given us some wonderful stuff, stuff through, the, through scripture to follow. I think that over time, people have come to realize that they can trust us. There was something happened about a year ago and I received a call one morning that so-and-so had passed away and would I come and say a prayer over him? And I did that. And of course, you know, being me, I wept. <laughs> and scripture says that we should weep with those who mourn and laugh with those who rejoice, you know, rejoice with those who rejoice. So it's sort of walking on the journey. And somebody did ask me that when we first came. What is your purpose in being here, Marilyn? And I said, well, to walk with people on their journey. And, and that is a privilege, you know. I think that for somebody who is thinking of coming up to, to serve, I think that's it. We come to serve and we come to learn and we we come to be stretched. You will be stretched whether you want to or not. <laughs> but that's part of growing, eh? That's a sign that you're alive if you're being stretched. And so I'm grateful for that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. Well, it is a joy and a privilege to be here at Holy Family in Lower Post to celebrate our, our life. And we have life because of Jesus. Jesus gives us his life. He gives us his very life in the Eucharist and in his word. And as always, we prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive Jesus. God wants us to be alive, to be alive forever. This is quite something. Now, if you kill a moose and eat a moose, it's going to keep you alive for a winter. And if you go fishing, you're going to get a fish you keep alive for a week. But when Jesus feeds us, you live forever. And the life that Jesus gives us is something that causes us to not only be alive, but to be fully alive, to have joy, to be happy, to be filled with the greatest gift that God has for the earth, peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Yeah, the Liard River in the old days was the transportation for all of the missionaries. They used to come up the Liard from Fort Nelson, and they'd come up from Dees Lake down the Dees River. It really was the transportation route for all of the north. So they could bring in supplies during the summer and then be able to survive all winter. Because this river will have two, three, four feet of ice on it in the wintertime. But this time of year, there's fish in the river and people can go out and get what they need for the winter. They use the river to go hunting nowadays, but for transportation, the Alaska Highway and 
all the other highways up here are pretty well taken its place. But it's still used by some people for hunting and trapping and living on the land. But the whole north is just rivers like this that really are the lifeblood historically for the whole uh, territory. One of, the, one of the goals in particular of the priesthood, and maybe that's why Pope Benedict declared this the year of the priest, uh, the ministerial priesthood, is to literally give their lives for the people. Um, martyrdom is sort of the goal for the Roman Catholic priest. It, it, I know that sounds like, how many are you gonna to attract to the priesthood when you say martyrdom is the goal? But that truly is it. It's to literally flame out in love, to fall in love uh, completely and radically for something that you're not gonna get anything out of, except of course, uh, eternal life, um, which isn't a bad deal. There's a great song that uh, the people sing. Peace is flowing like a river, flowing out of you and me. It'd be something, you know, if uh, we had all the people down here and had a baptism. I bet you there's been a few people baptized in this river. I think it's a little bigger than the Jordan, but same, same thing baptized in water and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for new life in Jesus Christ. Roderick, a member of the Congregation of Notre Dame. Bishop Chob Lock Singer invited Sister Angela Shea and myself to come to Telegraph Creek in the summer of 1991. And I didn't know where Telegraph Creek was, didn't know anything about it. So we came to Telegraph for two weeks and they, they asked me if I would come back to Telegraph to live. And so when I went back, I asked um, permission from the community to come to Telegraph, and they gave permission. I've traveled uh, the roads. I've traveled with my truck, I've traveled with Skidoo. I've skied to some places, and I wasn't able to get there any other way. I've also gone by boat down river to work with some of the families. The, um, the community of Telegraph Creek is made up of 99% uh, Taltan First Nations. The Taltan people are very welcoming people and they welcomed me with open arms in 1991. They were very happy to, to receive me and have me live here among them. Sister Anne came into Telegraph and she filled a space in the community that was well needed. So the 17 years that I have journeyed with them have been a very deep spiritual experience for myself. She helps people out when someone is in need, she's there. She was there for the community whenever we had a great loss. And she brought teaching of the church back to us. I have worked with the uh, Taltan people in every facet, I think, of their lives. In the, um, in, I've celebrated with them in their joys. I have also been with them in times of sorrow and difficult times. Got involved in our culture. She got really involved and she got welcomed into our clan systems. So it's gonna be, she's gonna be missed. I am leaving and I'm leaving with a, let's say, a very heavy heart. 
I go forth from here hoping and praying, praying more than hoping, that someone will replace me here, either a sister, a priest, anyone who, who wishes or has any desire to come to the White Horse Diocese and especially here to Telegraph Creek, I would say yes. You would certainly benefit a great deal and would enjoy the experience here with the in Telegraph because you won't find um, a better people anywhere. Before we start to eat, I would like to say thank you to all of you for welcoming me here to Telegraph Creek 17 years ago. Your deep, deep spirituality of the Taltan people have really enriched my life. And each one of you, you are family to me. As I leave to go back to the East Coast, and you will be in my prayers and in my thoughts for the days to come. She gave us a lot, and in return, we gave her a lot as well. And the way we're all feeling, I believe she's feeling that too. couples with family because that's something that sustains you from within your own family it is a tremendous grace in a community like Iscut. Marriage and family life is at the heart of the mission. Well that's maybe one of the reasons uh, I kind of like coming down to this area because there's some great rainbow trout fishing and uh, just, just down the road in, in the lakes here, uh, beautiful rainbow trout. As a matter of fact, we just went out this afternoon and caught ourselves a little bit of supper. And uh, it, it really is nice. Uh, you know, it's a, a little ministry, a little fishing, and, uh, and fishing's probably a pretty good pastime for a bishop because it's kind of what I'm doing all the time anyway. Um, fishing for souls, fishing for the people of God, being a good shepherd kind of goes hand in hand with being out there and uh, taking care of some real fish in a nice lake. My name is Kate O'Donnell and I've been a member of Madonna House Apostolate for 30 some odd years. All our Madonna House foundations live by begging. If we need something, we'll go to, might go to a store and beg for it. Mary House was founded in 1954 three members of Madonna House Apostolate drove a truck across from Combermere, Ontario, which is where our main house is, up to the Yukon to open up this house. We came at the invitation of Bishop Jean-Louis Coudere. He asked us to be here to be a presence in the people and to assist mostly at that time people who were coming in from the villages for medical treatment. Predominantly it was women who were pregnant and they needed a safe place to stay before their due date. Our primary work here is actually the corporal and spiritual works of mercy, and we do it in different ways. You go and you live there, and you find out what the people need, and then you respond to those needs, but on a very simple basis, and most of it is one-on-one. -on -one. People still come to the door. Lots, lots of the time it's the men on the street that um, need something. Maybe they, all they need is a cup of water and so we have a tap and they can get water. They can help themselves to water and we'll do that. It's a gift to be able to be here in the Yukon and be part of the mission team. Probably the biggest thing to know is that you can come here and be a presence and share your faith. Simple ways, nothing big, nothing fantastic. But it, if, if God's put it in your heart to come and be here and to do that, 
then he will also um, fulfill that and, and support you in everything else. I always love to point out to people that so often the Lord Jesus says, fear not. You know, the night he was born, the angel said, fear not, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And, uh, and I think that is the message that we have to bring to people who have been suffering from abuse or, or from their own lives that have got out of control. Really, I look back and ponder where I came from and sort of what, where, you know, the whys in the road and in ignorance, you know, the decisions were put before me and it was like I was just led one way and in complete ignorance. But in retrospect, I think, amen, because we could end up in a completely different place and I'm so glad I am where I am now. And no matter what you do in life, there is somebody that guides you. That no matter what, you are led. That's what it is. Your vocation, you have a call. But the call that God calls you, but He leads you, He puts you where He wants. And you have to bend no matter what. So many who just gave their lives uh, for love of the Lord, love of the gospel. Um, sure, they made mistakes, but you know, God uses the weak to confound the strong, and that's the ministry, that's the mission. It's apostolic, it's what it's all about. Come on, Kelly. Oh, there's nothing like rolling in the snow when it's minus 30. Yeah, the lake's frozen now. It's going to be frozen until the middle of June. It's just so that we it makes it easier walking. You know, God has given us a tremendous playground, Kelly. We just get to run and jump and play and have fun in the snow. Oh, yeah. All right, ah, ah, <laughs> there you go. The need is very great, and I'm gonna go fishing, and I'm gonna trust the Holy Spirit. As the Lord promised, he said, I will not leave you. I will be with you always until the end of time. I believe that, and I trust that, and I'm absolutely hopeful. So where the future lies is entirely in God's hands. I'm just doing my little part every day, one day at a time. Thank you.